what is the difference between instant and scheduled triggers on make. In this video, we are going to make a deep dive on these two different triggers and show some examples where one makes sense versus the other. So stay tuned. Hey, my name is Manuel and we love automation. If you like these kind of automation tutorials, make sure to subscribe to our channel as we're outputting a lot more content over the coming weeks and months to go. So we are talking about instant versus scheduled triggers. So what does that actually mean? What is an instant trigger? Basically on make an instant trigger looks like this lightning bolt. And that means whenever data comes in, it will execute that scenario, that automation. And if there's no data, nothing will happen. No operations will be consumed. Whereas if you have a scheduled trigger, you can see this clock. That means it needs to run on an interval. So it needs to run every X minutes or once on a specific day or every day or days of the week or whatever. But it will run nonetheless if there is data or not coming in. So it will always consume one operation per run per check. So for example, if you run at uh, regular intervals and just uh, let it run every minute, it will consume a lot of operations every single time it checks for new rows on a Google Sheet in that example. Now there's one more tag that you can see. So in general, you try to use the instant trigger as much as possible, but there are some cases where you don't want to use it or you can't use it like here it shows the instant flag or the tag which means here the instant trigger is available for what changes perform a function but it's not available for watch new rows and that means for what new rows you will never be able to make it run instantly anyways there's also another tag here that is the acid tag it's not really related to the instant and uh, schedule trigger but i still want to mention it here the asset means if the asset attack is there and something fails in your scenario it will actually roll back and try to execute it again once you run the scenario again so the data is not lost it will actually try to roll back and revert the changes that it has done in your scenario and then sit back in the queue until you're ready to process it okay now when to use instant triggers instant triggers are mainly if you want to process data in real time for example if a form submission comes in and you want to send a confirmation directly to that user back then you want to use an instant trigger but if you're just collecting the form submissions and then you're sending them off to your analytics data and you want to review it once a week then you can simply set it to a schedule to check it once a week and process all form submissions at once because that can save you also a operations. If you run it instantly, it will consume more operations and it also will run in parallel, which means if there are 100 form submissions come in at the same time, they will be processed at the same time. And sometimes this will give you unwanted results. The schedule trigger is mainly if you have batch processing or if you want to run scenarios at specific dates and times or days of the week, for example, or you simply don't need the data instantly and you want to save some operations by processing multiple bundles at a time now let's look at how this works with google sheets so the watch changes one this one over here it requires an extension to be installed on your google sheet so here's a sample google sheet and it requires the make for google sheets extension and then in the settings you can set a webhook url which is which you can find over here and then if you run the scenario and then you change something in here it needs to be manual so it does not work if you make any changes with the api in our course the make simplified accelerator we're teaching you ways how you can get around that so you're getting instant triggers as well with google sheets even though the update comes from any source like an api or something like that so if i do the manual update here it will actually trigger the watch changes and it will display the data that has been updated so the row values here manual co and sda whatever what i just input here and then the watch new rows so this is running on a schedule so it will check every 15 minutes for example if there's something new and it will not be instant so if i change something here it will not process the data only if the schedule is hit and the scenario runs it will check if there has been any changes and then it will 
provide the changes. And if there are no changes and it still runs, then it will simply output nothing, but it will still consume one operation, which means your bill for that check. There's another type here for mail hooks or emails that is kind of similar. So you can set up a mail hook, which is basically an email address where you can forward emails to and then it will automatically and instantly start that automation and you can process whatever you want like i will show you an example a little bit later for a mail hook or you can use the watch emails module but the watch emails module is not instantly so that means here you can filter or you can check every x minutes or days or whatever if there's a new email with certain filter conditions and if there is then you want to process it so there's also a big difference if you need it instantly or not between the instant and the schedule trigger now to give it a little bit more context let's jump into some use cases the first use case i want to look into is actually of an older video that we did uh, about zoom and how to keep your zoom cloud storage clear and there is a webhook an instant trigger at the beginning to watch recordings from zoom and then it will download the cloud recording it will upload it to your google drive and then you can send the share link to your customer or to whomever you had the meeting with. And then you delete the cloud recording to always keep that storage cloud storage free because it's very expensive on Zoom to have that cloud storage. I will link the YouTube video here in the top corner, top right corner. And you can just click on it and watch that video if you want to review how that works. It's a really nice concept and it really saves you a lot of cloud storage to keep your Zoom build down. The second use case I want to look into is assigning task cards to members. So for example, we are receiving an error notification of make where an email comes in that a certain center here had an issue. We are using the mail hook here to forward these kind of emails automatically, instantly to this email address to kick off this automation. And then we're extracting all relevant information with a match pattern with RecX. So RecX is very powerful. Check the description below this video if you wanna learn more about how RecX actually works and how you can use it for your own advantage, especially in combination with automation. It makes a lot of sense and is really helpful. So we extract the relevant information and then we're adding a new support ticket in our project management tool. Of course, we're using Plutio, but you can use any other tool there. And then we are simply like adding the description here. Like there's a new error in your scenario. Here are the details in your own, the scenario name, organization name, and the details of that error. Please get it fixed as soon as possible. You can assign it to a certain team member or a group or whatever your project management tool supports. And now, there's already one email waiting in the queue because I had it turned off. There was uh, it was not instantly processed and it's waiting in the queue. So let's process it. And then if I turn it on, this will be uh, run always in real time. We are extracting the information over here, like the serial name, the serial URL, URL, the organization name, and then the actual error that came in. And it creates that support ticket for us. That is very handy and for these kind of support tickets for errors you always want to use an instant trigger of course because errors need to be fixed and you want to get reminded about them as soon as possible. You could also add it to Slack and send a Slack reminder or any other tool that you want like Android you can get a push notification on your phone or any other solution that you want. Let's get into another example which is for example employee onboarding. So whenever a new employee joins your company, there is a signed contract or a form submission for employee onboarding or whatever you use as the trigger. And in real time, we want to give them access to the required um, folders in our Google Drive. So they have access to everything they need. We can also use it to create the Google account with the Google Workspace admin modules or give them any other access they need or send them any other information they need or add them to a database or whatever you want. And this is also an instant trigger because of course the employee would like to have an instant experience after they have on have been onboarded that they get access to everything this is like it also applies to sales so if you have a new sale of course you want to instantly give them access to what they've just purchased so for example for us if someone buys our course they get instantly access to everything that is needed there's no human intervention necessary 
they can start right away. So there's no waiting time there, no support that needs to get back to them, but it just works everything instantly. So let's check that one out. The data comes in and then we have like the employee ID, name, company email, and then the department. And then based on the department, we have different filters. So if they are in the marketing department, we want to give them access to the marketing department folders. If they are in another department, uh, like for example, sales, we want to give them access to a different folder. And then you simply search for the file folder or set up this path depending on your onboarding needs. So you can really customize it to whatever you need and then give that employee access and share the link with them. Now let's get into schedule triggers and how they might be helpful. Here's an example of a daily product inventory tracker. So basically we have um, the inventory of our apples, our bananas, our cherries, our um, dates and our eggplants. And we have a, th a certain threshold. So whenever the inventory um, reaches this threshold or it goes below this th threshold, we want to get notified and we want to get a notification once a day. So every morning when I wake up, I want to get notified if there's something running out of stock and we need to restock that um, that item. So that is a very common concept for many e-commerce stores that tend to get out of stock because they don't notice that certain products get out of hand. So this can also be automatically updated with another scenario that we're not talking about right now, but um, we are looking into the notification setting. So for example, this one would be like this. It's a schedule trigger. We search every day at 8 p.m. We're searching for all the inventory and then we are putting up some filters. So if the quantity on hand, we parse the number, is less than the minimum inventory level parse number, because like uh, just just a hint google sheets always outputs it as a string so the number will not be possible to be used for calculations so if you're getting data out of google sheets you always want to use the parse number here if it's a number type in order to make proper calculations all right if the quantity on hand is less than the minimum inventory level we want to combine it into a list and then we uh, use a row separator new row and then we send that list to us in, a, in an email where it says products failing uh, where it says products falling below minimum inventory level and here are the products in your inventory falling below their minimum inventory level please restock them as soon as possible and then it has a list of the products that you actually want to or that you actually need to restock. Now let's get into our final use case, number five for schedule triggers. This is for an RSS feed. So unfortunately on make, there is no immediate, no instant trigger for RSS feed. That means you have to check regularly if there's a new video. But in our case, for example, um, this is for YouTube. We know that we publish the YouTube videos at a certain time. So we can already trigger it or schedule it to run once a week or twice a week or whatever, right before publish time or right after publish time, and then get that new item. Then we run through OpenAI to get a sh very short summary for social media and then upload it to social B to um, create a schedule there. So um, I'm getting a reminder on my personal phone to post about this new video on my personal Facebook profile. And in that case, like a schedule trigger makes sense because we don't have the option to make it an instant trigger. And of course it would be better to make it an instant trigger, but sometimes um, it's not possible. And then you wanna schedule it as least as possible to save operations. So I would not run this um, every minute or every 15 minutes because it would consume a ton of operations which are unnecessary if I know that it only needs to run at certain times. I hope this got you some inspiration about when to use instant triggers, when to use schedule triggers, and when it makes more sense to use either or type, and also to spark some creativity about what kind of different use cases there might be with both types of triggers. If you have any questions about this, put them in the comments below this video and we'll get back to you soon. Please like and subscribe to our channel so we can output a lot more content. Thank you for watching.